All right, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to prepare a fish that's going to be cooked whole. Here we have a gorgeous black sea bass. Season just opened up yesterday, went out loaded up, and perhaps my favorite way to eat these is to cook them whole on the bone. Preparing a fish this way is certainly more work and it's definitely a lot messier than filleting the fish, but the extra effort is definitely well worth it. When you cook a fish whole on the bone, it really just makes the fish taste better. The skin protects the delicate flesh, and the bones add some juiciness and give it flavor. And plus you can stuff the body cavity with fresh herbs and citrus. It really makes a nice primal yet delicious meal. The first step is we need to scale the fish. Now we definitely don't want to do this inside our nice kitchen here. Uh, it's going to make a big mess. My wife would yell at me if I did it in here. We're going to take it out into the backyard and uh, we're going to make a mess outdoors where nobody's going to notice. So all we need is a butter knife and a pair of kitchen shears and we are ready to go. All right, the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna remove the top fin and I mainly just do this because there's some sh really sharp spines on that. And if they get you when you're scaling it, they can poke you pretty good. So we're just gonna clip that down. The chickens are gonna eat that. And I'm also gonna cut this one down a little bit. And we'll remove this fin. Do the same thing on the bottom. Just trim that up a little bit. Get out of there, chicken. We'll eat that. Nothing's going to go to waste here. The chickens are going to eat everything we don't eat. There you go. Have a fin, buddy. I'm just going to cut all the fins off. The tail is okay to leave on. If I was grilling it, I would trim the tail down a little bit. But we're going to be doing this in the oven so we can leave the tail on. And now, I'm just going to grab the fish by the tail, angle our butter knife forward. I'm just going to go to town and start scraping that. And it's going to take a while to get all the scales out of there, so you just kind of keep working it. I try to get every single scale off there, even down the belly. And it's certainly a lot easier to do this before you gut the fish. cheeks too, that's actually some of the best meat on the fish is on the cheeks. And they do sell a specialized tool for scaling fish. I've never actually tried one. This butter with knife seems to work pretty good for me. Careful, make sure you get right up to the fins. All right. All right, so we have our black sea bass has been scaled. Now we brought it back in the kitchen. We're gonna rinse it off and we're also gonna need to gut it and cut out the gills. A real good rinse. Nothing worse than getting a scale on your fish when you're eating it. Make sure we've got everything off. Just a couple right up on the hump there. Let's see All right, and now it's time to gut it. All right, now things are really gonna get messy. It's time to gut it. I'm going in right at the vent. Oh! Right along the bottom, through that bone. And right up to the gills.
crack that open. Reach in there, and we're gonna need to make a cut of the esophagus. Right in there, don't be shy. And rip out the guts. Yep. All right, so our sea bass has been gutted. Now we just wanna make sure we remove the gills can give it kind of a bitter off taste if you cook the fish with the gills in there. So we're just gonna reach in there with our kitchen shears. And cut those out on both sides. Now we're just gonna give the whole fish a good rinse inside and out. And that's it, we're ready to cook it now. I'm just gonna dry them off real quick with some paper towels. Try at the body cavity. And we're also going to want to make a few slashes on the side. This is going to allow our seasonings to get down into the meat. So just take a sharp knife. We're not going to want to cut all the way in, just a little score. Maybe a quarter of an inch in. And it's really going to let the flavor seep down into the meat. And we'll repeat on the second side. Tonight we're going to cook up this whole sea bass in the style of Asian steamed with fermented black beans. So recipe out of Dave Pop's Mash Cook in the Catch. It's an on the water uh, publication, great cookbook. And I remember Dave made this dish for me probably 10, 15 years ago, blew my mind. Just kind of changed my whole outlook on eating fish whole. Um, I'm going to hand things over now to my wife, Susan who is a much better cook than I am, especially when it comes to Asian cooking. I just don't have a knack for it. She's much better at it. She's gonna show you how to prepare my favorite black sea bass steamed with black fermented beans. All right, Susan, tell us everything you know about fermented black beans. All right, these fermented black beans, these are not the same black beans that you put in your Sunday chili. These are a black soybean that's been fermented and packed in salt. If you're lucky enough to live near a Chinese market, you can pick them up there. I happen to have to get mine on Amazon because the Cape does not have a market like that. Um, but what they are, they are fermented and packed in salt. They add a ton of flavor for a small amount. I like to rinse them in a little bit of water to get that saltiness out. Uh, but you'll find that a small amount gives you that real Nami punch that uh, everybody's talking about these days. As Andy had mentioned, the first time we had this dish, uh, we were photographing a, a cookbook for Dave Pop's mash. And he made this dish for us and it really blew my mind that something so dramatic actually could be very simple to make with a few really good ingredients. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this beautifully prepared fish and we are going to dress it very simply. We're gonna take some fresh ginger and we're just gonna kinda rub it along with this side and we're gonna put a little garlic and put it on that side. Uh, I like to add a little jalapeno. Dave did not do that, but that's my own taste. Um, some finely shredded scallion, a little cilantro, uh, and those black beans. We're gonna kinda flip it over, let that rest on the other side. 
uh, and do the same on this side. Garlic, ginger, the jalapeno. This doesn't have to be crazy fancy. Just kind of throw it on there. Um, the black beans, you can kind of uh, put them a little bit in those gashes that uh, you, you sliced in there as you're prepping the fish. You can put some fresh lime in the cavity. You can put, if you've got a little extra um, ingredient, you can kind of put that in there. And all of this is just gonna add a ton of flavor while the fish steams. Now, one other thing I like to do, because I don't like my food looking back at me, is I like to give the whole fish a little homemade eyeball. So there's a little slice of radish with a fermented black bean. And yeah, I think that makes it look much nicer. So what we're gonna do now is prep the fish for the steamer. Uh, what I usually do is find a plate that fits inside my regular size roasting pan. We threw a couple uh, tin foil snakes in there to boil on top of. You could use a tuna can or whatever you have. We're gonna place the fish very carefully right in there. Watch your fingers. It's okay if the tail sticks out a little bit. They'll be fine. We made a quick sauce of soy sauce, uh, sherry, and um, I have some honey in there because I happen to have honeybees, but you could also use a little bit of sugar, brown sugar, just something to sweeten it up a little bit. And you're gonna drizzle that right on top because that is going to make an amazing sauce once this thing comes out of the steamer. So we'll seal that right up. And we usually say uh, 10 minutes for every uh, pound. So we'll say probably about 20 minutes we'll be done with this. So it's been about 20 minutes. We're gonna give this a quick check. Uh, whoo, that is smoking hot. We're gonna check it with the temperature. You want it to be right around 140, which this is registering whoo, just above that. So this is perfect. It's gonna be really juicy, really moist. This is, this is perfect. So this last step is what is gonna take this dish from fire to molten. We're gonna take a little bit of sesame oil and canola oil, heat it till it's super hot, and we're gonna slowly drizzle it over the top of your fish. This is gonna add a ton of flavor, and it's going to, believe it or not, crisp up with that skin just a touch that's gonna to add a ton of um, flavor and texture to your steamed fish. Okay, so we've plated our steamed fish. Um, I've served it with a little bit of sticky rice and some beautifully roasted vegetables. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of those juices that the fish cooked in and just drizzle that right over the top. You get a ton of rice to soak that up. You've got the fish to soak that up. And this is gonna make a real dramatic presentation and be really, really tasty. All right, so there you have it. We have a beautiful steamed Asian style sea bass with fermented black beans, some roasted vegetables, some sticky white rice, beautiful sauce. This is gorgeous. This is, I've been waiting all winter to eat a dish like this. And I'm actually the best piece of the fish, hands down. It's right there, right in the cheek. A little bit of that sauce. Down the hatch. That's money. So good. It's juicy. Um, there's so much more flavor when you cook a fish whole on the bones like that. It just comes out juicier and it's not dry and it's a beautiful thing. Turn that camera off because I'm going to turn into a caveman right now and devour this, half of this thing anyway. But thank you, Susan, for helping me. And you're a better cook than I am. Mine would have been much uglier than this. And 
I can't wait to pick it up. 